Shabir Sheikh gets some unexpected support. A prisoner rights group wants to help get him out of jail. Bust for drunk driving. More than a thousand motorists stand to lose their cars. And from the deserts of the Dakar Rally to the greens of Hawaii, two sportsmen do South Africa proud. This is E! News Primetime. A very good evening. A new bid is being made to get Shabir Sheikh freed from prison. He's getting the backing of a prisoner rights group. They say his health problems are serious enough for him to be released on medical grounds. But Correctional Services doesn't agree. Often full of bluster at his fraud and corruption trial, Sheikh was far more subdued when he went to jail. The former financial advisor to Jacob Zuma started serving his 15-year sentence last November at a prison in Mpangeni. But he has spent much of the last two months at this private hospital in Durban. He is being treated for a mild stroke and the subsequent complications. Doctors say his blood pressure is dangerously high, and if it's not brought down, he risks having another stroke. A prisoner rights group feels that Sheikh's condition is bad enough for him to get parole, and instead be placed under house arrest. He can be released on correctional supervision without saving uh, the whole of his sentence. Or if that doesn't work, he may also, through his doctor, ask to be declared unfit to continue with his sentence or to be released under medical parole. But that will depend on his health. It will also depend on a decision from the doctors. Mbluli says they'll be meeting with Sheikh in hospital tomorrow to discuss a possible course of action. But correctional services say it's not that simple. The Westfall Parole Board that'll hear the case usually only grants medical paroles to terminally ill prisoners so they can die at home with dignity. Sheikh's family say they hope tomorrow's meeting isn't just a publicity stunt for the prisoner rights group. They say they're working through the proper channels to try and get Sheikh out of prison. Sheikh's lawyer has already applied for leave to appeal in the Constitutional Court. Morgan Collins, E! News, Durban. And while Sheikh is battling to stay out of prison, another high-profile prisoner will walk free in just over a week's time. Tony Ngeni was sentenced to four years behind bars for fraud, but he'll only serve 20 weeks of that sentence. The disgraced former ANC chief whip got a hero send-off when he went to prison last August. He was convicted of fraud after accepting a discount on a luxury vehicle from one of the arms deal bidders. Yangeni's first weekend parole at home landed him in trouble. He was photographed with a beer in his hand at a braai and arrived back late at Malmesbury Prison. A subsequent investigation cleared him of any parole violations. Correctional Services has consistently denied that Yangeni's received preferential treatment. The date for his release was set by an independent parole board and even though he'll be out of jail on the 15th of January, He'll not be entirely free. He will have to serve at least three months of his sentence under correctional supervision at home. And he'll be prohibited from drinking alcohol or leaving the Western Cape. More than a thousand suspected drunk drivers caught this festive season are in for a shock. Traffic authorities intend seizing their vehicles once they're convicted. And the Assets Forfeiture Unit has been approached to help. Clamping down on motorists to try and bring down the number of road deaths. Still, many have ignored the law. Speedsters clocking in at over 200 kilometers an hour and motorists under the influence of alcohol still behind the wheel. One of the latest alleged offenders, a Pretoria High Court judge. A Jaguar had smashed into a wall of a house. When the officers arrived, arrived on the scene, the driver was over the influence, under the influence of liquor. The officers then had to arrest the person and take the person to have a blood sample drawn. Uh, the driver has been released on a bail of 1,000 rand and there is a charge of drunken driving uh, currently being investigated. Those convicted of drunk driving now stand to lose their vehicles. We have about 1,300 that are possible uh, 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 
cars that can be seized. Uh, the process is that what we do, we take these cases individually and we look at them together with the asset forfeiture unit and then we make a decision as to which ones can we uh, fast track to go to court and then we follow the process. Once the person has been convicted in court, then we can immediately up, uh, make an application to the High Court to have that car forfeited to the state. Previous convictions for drunk driving could automatically mean your car will be impounded without the option of a fine. Traffic officials have had their hands full this festive season with everything from speedsters to drunk drivers. But they say they're still hoping to see lower figures this year as the final death toll statistics are released in about a week's time. Belinda Moses, E! News, Johannesburg. And on the Western Capes roads, traffic authorities set up checkpoints such as this one where they inspected vehicles for licenses and roadworthiness and made sure drivers weren't tired or under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Our aim is to focus on the drivers who are driving under the influence. And the crackdowns showing signs of success. Cops nabbed this commercial truck driver before lunch, allegedly way over the legal limit. Authorities believe this holiday season's final road death toll will be lower than previous years, but still more than 1,300 people were killed on the roads in December. Many of the accidents involved buses and taxis. This SA Roadlink bus was pulled off the road and fined 2,500 rand for not being in possession of a legal permit. The company had to send another bus to pick up the irate passengers. We've already late and you know we are tired really. So I think they must just improve. If at all it's their problem, they must just improve if at all they want customers. This company must get rid of this bus because they're wasting us time now. And this just weeks after the company's safety record made headlines when one of their buses crashed in KwaZulu-Natal, killing 12 people on Christmas Eve. Investigators are blaming a tire blowout for that accident. Amy Brook, E! News, Cape Town. When E! News Prime Time continues, an eight-year-old girl is orphaned after her parents drown at a Cape Town beach.